Hi, my name is Jordan Hetrick, and I'm the author of books about how to use your GoPro cameras. In this video, I want to help you get started with the GoPro Fusion, which is GoPro's first 360 degree camera. Using the Fusion is definitely a new experience for those of you who haven't used a 360 camera. So I want to help you get set up, get started, and learn the basics of your camera so you can get out there and start shooting. I've also written a book specifically for the GoPro Fusion, and it'll take you all the way from start to finish so that you can learn how to use your new camera and produce content with it. So let's get started and check out the GoPro Fusion. The first step is just setting up your Fusion. So let's just get it out of the box and get your camera set up. So you can just turn the box over. I'm going to use a knife to open it up here. Just break these little seals here. Then turn the box back over and you can just slide the top off just like that. Now you can just pull the paperwork out of the box here. And there's this whole section that's holding the camera. You can just pull that out and set it down carefully so it doesn't tip over. And underneath it is all the stuff that comes with your Fusion. Go ahead and pull out this mounting base here. It's got squarish corners. It's got a flat base on it. So we're going to use that as a stand to set up the camera. And under the case here is the battery. So you can grab the battery out of there. Which looks just like this. And also grab the thumb screw that's underneath it. Because Fusion is a 360 camera and records everything all at once, it's got a lens on both sides of the camera. You want to make sure not to set it down on these lenses because you could scratch them potentially. So I'm going to use this mounting base here as a stand for the camera while we set it up so we can help protect these lenses. One side of the camera has Fusion on it, the other side says GoPro and it's got the LCD screen. Take the camera with the GoPro logo facing you and insert it into the mounting base like this so that the silver tab is on the right side and on the same side as the GoPro logo. And then slide it into the base here until the holes line up. You might have to push it kind of hard to get it to line up. And then insert the thumb screw and screw it in. You might have to wiggle a little till it screws in. And then screw it in all the way to secure the camera. Next we're going to insert the battery and the micro SD cards. Fusion requires two class 10 or UHS-1 micro SD cards. I'm using the SanDisk Extreme 32 gigabyte cards here because they were being offered as a promotion when I got this camera. However, if you have the option, I would recommend going up to 64 gigabytes for each card. With 32 gigabytes, you're gonna be getting about an hour of video footage at 5.2K, 30 frames per second. So it's nice to have a little more storage if you can't afford to get a bigger card. The battery and the micro SD cards go in the door here on the left side of the camera. That's why I had the thumb screw go on this side so it's not in the way here. So just rotate your camera, press this little button down and slide it down and then the door can pop open just like that. Now take the Fusion battery with the GoPro logo facing the GoPro logo on the front of the camera and insert it and just snap it into place. You'll see next to the battery there's a slot on each side. Each one takes a micro SD card and you just want to make sure that the text of the micro SD card is facing towards the battery. And then you insert it into the little slot there and just try to push it down with your fingernail far enough till it snaps into place. It should stay all the way down flush with the battery. You'll hear a little click. And then insert the other micro SD card. And once those are in there, you can shut the door by pressing down and just sliding it up. Now let's turn your camera on and go through some of the basic setup items before we charge the camera completely. So press the power mode button here on the side of your camera and your camera will turn on. Once your camera turns on, it's going to ask what language you want to use for the dialog items. So I'm just going to keep it to English, but if you want to scroll through, you can press the side button here to scroll through the different options. I'll go back to English and then press the red button here, the shutter button to enter. And then it's going to say verify your selection, press it again, turn on GPS. I'm going to press yes, so I'm going to push enter here. And then it's going to say, do I want to turn on voice control? Yes. I'll press the red shutter button here again. And the voice setting, I'm going to do English, but if you want to change it, press the side button here to scroll through to your language. I'm going to confirm that. And now it's going to ask if we want to connect to the GoPro app. I'm going to press the side button here because we're going to do that in a minute. So I'm just going to press the side button to go to no and press the red shutter button to enter. Now your camera will go straight into video mode and you'll see that it's got a pretty low battery percentage here, probably 15 to 17 percent on your camera. So let's go ahead and get your camera charged before we go through the modes and take a little tour of the camera. You can hold down the side button here and your camera will turn off so we can get it charged. Now 
Now grab the charging cable out of the box here. It's this USB cable, it's a USB-C. The USB port to charge your camera is on the top left here in this door. To open the door up, just pre press the latch release button here, slide it up and then open the door like that. And you want to be gentle with these doors. These are probably the weakest link of the GoPro cameras. They can break. Insert this end of the cable into the USB port on your GoPro. And insert the other end into a USB charger or your computer. You can use a portable USB charger or a wall charger as long as it's 5 volt and 1 to 2 amp. And then plug this end of the USB cable into your charger. I'm turn the power on on the USB charger here. It might take a second, but you'll see that the light here comes on for your camera. And that means that your camera is charging. Fusion has a pretty large battery, so it'll take at least a few hours to charge. So you may want to push pause on this video and come back when this light is turned off here. That'll indicate that your camera is finished charging. If it hasn't turned off after about four hours, you can go ahead and unplug your USB cable and turn the camera on, and you should at least have enough charge to finish this video. When the light's turned off and your camera's finished charging, you can just remove the USB cable and then close this door again. Make sure this last release tab snaps back into place. When the door that we just used to charge your camera and the other door with the battery and the USB cards in it, when they're completely shut and the slash release tab is popped out, your camera is completely waterproof and safe to take in the water. Now that the camera's charged, I'm going to show you some of the recording modes. So press the power mode button on the side here again to turn your camera on. This here is the LCD screen which displays some of the important camera info. On the top here you can see a video camera that shows that you're in video mode. As well as a little voice control icon that shows it's turned on. GPS icon. And you can see which uh, video resolution you've got set here which is 5.2K30. And you can see the number of files and the recording time that's remaining on your memory cards and your battery life. So the first mode that your camera is going to go into is video mode. And this is where you record your 360 videos. There are a couple ways to record. You can either press the shutter button here. You just press it once to start. And then press it again to stop. You can also use voice control, which I'm not going to do right now because it'll activate your cameras as you're watching this. If you want to change modes, you press the mode button here and it will go to photo mode. It'll take a 360 photo and time lapse mode. And then that's the settings and press enter. All the settings are located in this menu. You can press the front shutter button to scroll through the different modes. There are also different modes within each mode. So under photo, if you scroll down here by using the mode button on the side and you press the front shutter button, you can see there's burst and there's also night photo. And then once you've selected it, you can just go done or you can hold down the side button to escape. And it'll take you back to shooting mode. I'll tell you a little bit more about each one of these items, but I just want to show you quickly what comes in the box with your Fusion. This here is a curved adhesive mount for the Fusion. This is a flat adhesive mount for the Fusion. This here is the case to protect your camera. And this here is the Fusion grip. The case is very important for keeping your camera protected, especially since there's lenses on both sides of the camera. It makes it really hard to set the camera down. So I pretty much always keep it in this case. To put the camera in the case, you just unzip it, open it up, and then put the camera in there so the thumb screws on the left side, the side with the zipper. And you just close it. Now your camera's nice and protected. So when you're traveling, cruising around, your camera's nice and safe. These adhesive mounts help create a semi-permanent spot to mount your camera. This one is a flat adhesive mount here. It's flat on the bottom, so you can mount it to flat objects. And this one here is curved, so you can mount it to a curved objects such as a helmet. You can always tell because the curved adhesive mount is round. And you just want to mount them to smooth, non-porous surfaces. To adhere the adhesive mounts, you basically just remove this red liner on the bottom. It's kind of a tacky surface. You want to stick it to your non-porous surface and then let it set for at least 24 hours. And within 72 hours, it's reached its full curing. And it should be tight enough that you can't pull it off when your camera's on there. And this here is the Fusion Grip, which is a, basically a selfie stick for the Fusion. It's an extendable pole. It's also a tripod. And I'll show you how it works. You just take off this plastic that's just for packaging. So just mount your camera to the end of it, just like you would any other mount. Slide it in there and line up the holes. Insert the thumb screw, make sure it's nice and secure. 
Then you can extend the pole by turning it counterclockwise and extending the pole out and then turn it clockwise to lock it into place. If you keep the camera straight in line with the pole like this, the pole will basically disappear, creating that magic floating camera feeling. You can also set up as a tripod by extending out these legs and setting it down like that. If you do take it in the water, when the pole is extended, it can get sand on this area here. So you want to make sure that before you close this, you rinse any sand off of it. If it gets in these little grooves here and then you shut it, it can cause the pole to either get stuck or it can make it really hard to open and close. Also, you can remove these mounting fingers if you need to. You just lift these metal tabs. They're very hard to lift. But you can lift them and then this can slide right off. If you haven't already taken advantage of the free GoPro app, I highly recommend that you go download it. It's available for iOS and Android. And it's available in the App Store or Google Play. If you just search GoPro app, you'll see this one here. And it's free. So the GoPro app can be used with Fusion for a variety of functions. I'm going to show you how to get connected with it real quick. Once you've downloaded the GoPro app, you can just open it up and go to camera. It might say add a camera if it's the first time you've ever done it, but I've already used it before obviously. So I'm just going to click the camera icon here. Click down here on add device and you can select the Fusion. And then it's going to walk you through some prompts to set up your camera to get it connected. So first you just turn your camera on. So I'm just saying my camera is on here. To turn your camera's Wi-Fi on, just press the mode button here until you get to the settings menu and then press the shutter button to enter. Press the shutter button again until you get to the Wi-Fi connections. Press the side mode button here and it says connect. Press the shutter button again. Now it says GoPro app. Then you can press the shutter button again and it's going to show you the camera name and password. Then you can press continue here. It's going to be looking for it from your phone. You can say pair, click join. So it connected it automatically. If a camera update's available, it should prompt you on this screen and go ahead and install the camera update. And that'll just update the firmware to fix any bugs from previous releases. And once you want to start using the app with your camera, you can just press on the camera icon here. Now you can see through your camera's lenses and you can either use the screen to pan around or you can use your phone to move and see different perspectives from your camera. Using the app is a great way to actually set up your shots and make sure the distance is correct and so forth. You can also use the app to zoom in and out just to see different perspectives of what your camera's recording. The app's definitely not perfect. It doesn't have much Wi-Fi distance, but it does help add some extra functionality to your camera since there is no viewfinder directly on the camera. When you're done recording, you can also view the media that's on your camera's micro SD cards. Once you download the files to your device, you can also use overcapture to create a normal perspective video from the 3D footage. To transfer files from your micro SD cards, you can either use the GoPro app to transfer them to your device, or you can import them to your computer using Fusion Studio and then do your editing from there. Even more so than with regular video, editing is where your Fusion footage is going to come alive. Using the GoPro app on your phone or tablet is an easy and quick way to get some of your Fusion footage out and share it quickly. Although for the ultimate control in your editing, I think you really need to take your Fusion to your desktop computer where you can bring it into Fusion Studio, stitch together and do some basic editing on the files that you want to use, even though it does take a long time to stitch the files using that program. After the pre-editing is done in Fusion Studio, you can bring it over into Premiere Pro and use the GoPro VR plugins, which work really well to manipulate the footage for the look that you're going for. There are so many techniques for editing your 360 photos and videos, and I'm not going to go into all of those in this video, but I do cover them in my book, so if you really want to learn all the tips and techniques for editing 360 content, check out my book for the GoPro Fusion, and you'll find it very helpful. Grab an extra battery. The GoPro Fusion uses this battery pretty quickly and it takes a long time to charge. So if you have an extra one, you should give yourself enough time to get the footage you want. Fusion is totally waterproof down to 16 feet and you can take it with you in the water with you and film all of your water activities, but it doesn't actually work filming underwater because of the distortion on the lenses. It messes up the stitch lines. I really hope you enjoyed this introduction to the Fusion and found some valuable tips. Once again, my name is Jordan Hetrick, and please check out my book for the Fusion on Amazon. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching and have fun. Mm -hmm.